guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. On my channel, along with my husband Chris, we take thrifted items and we give them new life. We take these unwanted, unloved, outdated items and we share the process of what we do to these items to get them ready to resell. And if you're not a reseller, maybe it's just something that you have laying around your own home and just stuff that you like to decorate yourself. In today's video, it is a trash to treasure. It is another thrift flip. And what I'm doing and what we're doing is we're taking some unwanted, outdated magazine racks and I am sharing the process of what I do with them to get them ready to resell in our retail booth and then some ideas of how to stage them. I do get a few questions on what do you do with magazine racks. So I'll, uh, some of you already probably have wonderful ideas. Feel free to share them in the comments so any of us resellers can get ideas of what to do with them because they are definitely an item that you kind of always see in the thrift store so i just absolutely loved all the detail in this magazine rack i love the handle i love the spindles i love the curves and the little knobbies that it had on it just i could just see transforming this piece and these always sell pretty reasonable i don't think that a 509 price tag is a bad price now this magazine rack I've had longer than I would like to admit. Somehow it's just kind of got moved from here to there. And I'm like, I need to get this done. This is a beautiful piece. I absolutely love the long legs on it. And I love that detail. And I don't think that that was a bad price, especially back in the day when I, you could see when I bought it. So I've had it for a while. And I just love this one. This is just a simple, this is an all-purpose caddy, not only just a magazine rack. I just love the slats of it. And they were basically giving it away at this price. So I'm like, thank you, 209. I will take that. I definitely was not intimidated by the little stencil on the side, though it was cute and though it had done its time. And I have this other storage box, though it is not a bread box. It is more like a little desk i would call it and i just thought i would throw it in with this grouping it is something that they do sell so i definitely wanted to get these done so i i don't mind the 609 price tag and like i said these sell just as well as a bread box for extra storage so i don't know if you all just get tired of watching me remove price tag because i know you're like I've common sense remove a price tag I tell you where I I have seen plenty of people paint over price tags so this is something I will never miss out at sharing please remove any kind of tags on your thrift flips so as you see here this one has a big it's not even a crack it's just where the wood is just is what the wood is but when I'm going to be painting it I'm going to need to be fixing these areas and this one must have scraped back and forth against something that had marred up the veneer so I'm going to be using some Durham water putty to fix these boo-boos in these items so Durham water putty is just a little bit of dry powder with a little bit of water mix up the consistency that's workable to, for you and mix up as much as you need I absolutely cannot recommend this enough yep it is a dry powder so no worries about when you actually don't put that lid back on and your wood fillers or your spackles all dried up so sometimes when you're being grabby at the Goodwill stores, and yep, sometimes I'm grabby, and then here, this little magazine rack, it was mix, missing one of the little knobbies, that all that detail that it gives. So I'm taking them off and trying to figure out what I can do because that actually holds it all together. And then for this little storage desk, I'm going to re be removing any of its hardware, all these hinges and that little knob. My go-to go for cleaning hardware is always Dawn Dish Soap. It is just a great cleaner. The, you know, these were all thrifted items, so you don't know where these pieces and parts have been. And then, of course, after they are dry, I put them on a piece of styrofoam. I love using the styrofoam because I can stick those little screws right in where they need to be. No losing screws. And my go-to, I we usually always paint hardware black. So my go-to is this Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in one. Absolutely love it. Even on that magnetic piece that keeps that door shut, I like to paint over that very aged <laughs> brown. And then if you are new to my channel, you will notice that I have a turntable. Oh my gosh, this is a game changer. I've been able to put it 
a board, items like this on a turntable and be able to spin around and get that 360 of spray and to seal and protect that Rust-Oleum paint in after that is dry, I seal it up with some polycrylic. And now I need to go back in and sand where I had put that Durham water putty. Yes, it sands very easy, but I do find the longer I let it sit, the harder and the more elbow grease sanding I have to do to it. And then I'm taking the orbital sander to remove the stencils on both sides of this. Just making sure that none of that paint is left on so that I don't have a chance for it to try to bleed through. You just never know what type of paint is underneath there some of the some types of paint do actually bleed all the way through especially since i know that i'm going to be painting this piece white i want to get all that stencil off as i started to sand this piece to even out where i had put the water putty at the bottom of these legs i noticed that the sander really started going right down into the wood what i thought was like a veneer board it or a little thin layer of veneer it was actually just a really heavy stain that was taking it all the way down to that poplar wood so i'm just going to be removing that whole all that on the side of this so that the texture the prosody is evened out then as as easily as the side sanded the front did not sand very easy so i'm at least just scuffing up as much of the front of these as i can then to clean all these pieces i am just using this super clean just a little bit of the cleaner in a bucket of hot steamy water when i go to clean my items i just use a rag and i really squeeze that rag out i don't need it to be soaking this wood you don't want to raise any grain of the wood by having too much water but you definitely just want to get into all the cracks all the edges anywhere that you're going to be painting you want your paint to adhere properly and not cleaning your product will make your paint chip it'll make it pucker it'll crackle so you definitely need to get these pieces all clean especially since you've gotten from a thrift store or even if then they're in your own home just cleaning products build up on stuff people touching it food any kind of residue left behind will prevent a paint from properly adhering to items that you're going to be painting so of course this magazine rack was only missing one of these little knobbies and when I took them off I realized that they were the things holding the screws that hold the whole thing together. But luckily I did remember that there was something similar at Hobby Lobby so off to Hobby Lobby I went to find some replacements. Though it wasn't the exact same size they were close enough since it was only missing one I'm moving all four down to the lower four and then I will put the smaller ones on the handles. But they were definitely needed because as you see the screws hanging out that is what's covering up that screw and holding that from slipping apart. And I used a little E6000 glue to make sure that all these four knobbies stayed on. And then unfortunately, the little knobbies that I had bought for the top, they weren't quite enough fit. So Chris did have to drill them out, make the hole a little bit longer for, so that they would cover up the screws. And we're going to put a couple coats of shellac on that bare wood knob so that when we go to paint it, it just evens out that prosody, that texture is all even because this piece is very shiny, as you can see. So just a couple coats of shellac will even out that prosody and so that little knobby at the top will not stick out like a sore thumb. Then why I had the shellac out, I could almost guarantee this red stain was going to bleed through. But it wasn't all about the bleed through because this item is going to be black. What it is is about evening out that texture. You still have some of that really shiny that's left behind and then that really raw wood. So what I'm doing here is that's what I'm doing. I'm evening out the prosody of this piece by play, spraying a couple coats of shellac on it. So, uh, yes, we are using the sprayer to paint these. These are not always the funnest things to paint when you're trying to hand paint them. So... Yep, we got our Graco sprayer out and we are all giving these a coat of the black onyx ready to use spray paint that we get right off the shelf from Walmart. It is nice to have the spray room, have the turntable so you can turn these items as you're spraying them in, and then we put them on extra pieces of board so we can move one in that's already 
painted and then move one out let that dry move another one in we definitely as flippers and trying to keep two booths stocked we do a lot of items all at once so this is our assembly line <laughs> of flipping items If you're enjoying this type of video and you are not already part of our YouTube family and you love getting the inspiration that we share from our thrift flips, please hit that subscription button so you can become one of our family members. And then after flipping them over, getting all sides all painted up black, I am going on to using some polycrylic. I just have them out on a resin table. I'm just going in with a spray can. Yes, I, we could have put it in the sprayer, but it is a lot of cleanup for this sprayer. And I find that the polycrylic in the can goes a long way. And I feel as if I had enough items to be able to spray with this. Some of these pieces like this one is stained black. So I definitely want to make sure that I get a nice coat. I love the polycrylic because I like that it turns blue. I know that I have enough coverage on there when it's wet because I can see that blue tint and it just dries nice. So back to the sprayer I go using some Kills paint and primer all in one on the flat white and yes we do water both of these paints down just slightly to be able to have them go through the sprayer so far we are loving this sprayer it has not it's been cleaning up real nice we haven't had any problems with clogs we have went through so many sprayers this is an airless one it does not hook up to your air compressor but we Love that we invested the $300 on a sprayer. We did have to buy a new spray head. This 211 spray head allows the amount of pressure and the amount of spray area it hits, but especially on these magazine racks with all those little cubbies and those little spindles, it is so nice to be able to spray them. If you are new to my channel, to our channel, this is a team effort. This is something, this thrift flipping is something that I do with my husband, Chris. So if you're new to our channel, you will always see us doing things together. He does a lot of the large furniture items and I do the small. These are medium pieces and we help each other out wherever we can. Like I said, we're trying to keep two booths stocked and are very blessed that things are still selling in the time that we're 
in. So what Chris is doing right now is he's taking some 220 sandpaper and we like to distress our items. So what he's doing is taking the 220 sandpaper on the edges, revealing some of that wood that's underneath. So I just want to give these a little something, something, a little bit of detail. Not a lot of detail, just something to add on to give them that they stand out a little bit more. So for that little storage box, I'm going to add this simple leaf to the top. And then for the one that I replaced those little knobbies on, I just kind of have that French country feel for it. So I'm going to be using this little stencil design that I'm getting off my Silhouette Cameo. So the nice thing about these designs, I make a stencil for every project I do. I, I just like having original designs. So what I do here is I'm just showing you how I duplicate it. I get it to the size that I need and then I can duplicate so that I, each side has a matching, the same size that it needs to. And then I just cut them out on some Oracle vinyl. This is a permanent vinyl that I get off Amazon. I did not end up using that number four. I didn't end up liking it after it had cut out. That happens. You change your mind as you see something done. So now I'm just, I use contact paper, the duck brand contact paper as my transfer tape. And now I am just eyeballing center, but of course I would be taking a ruler to make sure that it is centered because that's the OCD in me, making sure that I can get it as centered as I, pro as I possibly can. This is one of the reasons for me that I cut the vinyl down to as close as the image I can. That way I know where my center is and I can add masking tape that I get at the dollar store so that I don't touch where I don't want to be painted, but I rather get it all centered and then add some masking tape in. Then to fill in the space where I added those little knobbies and I kind of did that French country design, I went to the interweb. I looked up what does stuff in fr French say. So here is what it is. And so I thought that would be nice to add some wording to this piece. But I definitely didn't just want to write the stuff. It looks fancier when it's in a different language. And then for this one, I just, I just, yep, if you're new to my channel, I love green sack striping. So yes, I'm measuring to find center, even though I know that point is probably center. I just, my OCD gets the best of me and I want to make sure that I am centered. So all I'm doing is using some dollar store masking tape and making sure that I am centered. And for my green sack, I'm going to be putting some numbers on top of it. So I want that green sack to be a lighter color. So I'm using all the paints that I used for my stencil are the Apple Barrel multi-use. I like these. I like the way that they they are a permanent, they're sandable, they're washable once you've sealed them in. So that's why I always pick the multi-use one. And I just get the makeup sponge from the dollar store as my applicator. It comes in a large pack and then I just throw them away. But I rather have just a little bit of paint on that applicator and go over it a couple times to achieve the color that I want. I rather not try it, even though I rub that tape on, make sure it's on there good and secure and hopefully there's no air pockets. I rather just go over it a couple times other than trying to get it in a one coat coverage. Then refer, when I remove any of my stencils, even the vinyl and this tape, I always use the assistance of the heat of a blow dryer. That just warms up that sticky and releases it so that I don't pull off any of that previous paint. So to get my spacing, I'm just using this two inch masking tape that I get at the Dollar General. I love using masking tape because I can see where I already painted. See how you see that stripe all the way right through it? Now where that tape is overlapping onto the white, that's your space that's gonna be in between your next stripe color. So I'm just laying another piece of masking tape, leaving a little bit of a quarter inch gap. The nice thing about green sack striping, you can do whatever you want. You can eyeball, you can measure. It is the perfectly imperfect of green sack striping. I absolutely am obsessed with doing a green sack striping. So now yep, I'm doing the same thing on the other side. 
And then I painted that stripe the same way, made sure that it was good and dry with the blow dryer. And so I just think it needs a little bit more striping. So I'm just taking that piece of smaller masking tape, centering that line in between it. And then, yep, I'm going on to one more stripe. That's the thing. You just, when you're doing a project, you just do that project until you love it. And if you think it needs a little bit more, then yep, it needs a little bit more. So I knew that I wanted to do the number four, but I just didn't like that font when it was cut out. So I changed it to be a little bit more swirly. So I'm just using the LW Farmhouse. Do you see when I was removing my other stencils off my very well-loved duck brand contact paper that I was using for transfer tape, I needed to age some new pieces of transfer tape and what a perfect place in our workshop to do it because the one little on a table getting some sand dust wow that definitely makes it a nice age because that contact paper if you try to use transfer tape without trying to age it put it on a carpet put it on your sofa you know something to get some dust on it man it is nice and really sticky so you want to have it age just a little bit so i'm just sharing with you that I, yeah, the workshop, some sawdust works really nice. And I'm just eyeballing this, um, the perfectly imperfect again. I can, that's why I cut my image as close to the stencil as I can. And I can kind of see where the slats are, where my stripes is. And then I will just be using the little scraper tool to rub on the stencil. So yes, this is the black multi-use, multi-surface apple barrel paint that I used on all these items. Have I told you all how impatient I am for paint to dry? Yep, I love my blow dryer. I love a fan to help dry in between coats. I just keep putting on coats until I get the color that is pleasing to my eye. I rather do multiple coats than one th big thick coat. I have good luck using a boutonniere pin to remove those little bitty pieces that are left behind from your stencil. But the only thing I can suggest is remember you're not digging a hole, you're just trying to grab that vinyl. You don't want to scrape underneath. And even though we have sanded the rest of this piece already, Chris went through and sanded it for me, I like to age, I wanted to age this one. This one's a little bit more rustic to me, the one that I did the French country on. I left it nice and black, just a little bit of sanding just to make sure that it wasn't a raised image. And so I'm just going in and sanding it to get a little bit distressing before I seal it in. And then I use the Verithane Finishing Wax in the Natural. I can only find this at Home Depot. I don't know why, but you need to seal in your stencil just with something. If you want a top coat or, you know, for us, we just use this Verithane Wax. Just a little bit rub on and then wipe off any excess. So there was no need. I did actually play around thinking I was going to put a stencil on this, but it just, once I cut them out, I did not like them at all. And so this is what it needed to be. And then I went to Hobby Lobby, got these last two pieces of this baby grass greenery. Just look. Yep, I will sell it like this in the booth, but selling that greenery separate since I, you know, I want people to see how to stage it. 
Now for this one, I can env envision putting your paper plates, your silverware, using it as a little caddy. If you have an area in your house where you just wanna grab and go, kinda like a picnic basket, but yes, it does have those slats at the bottom. And then my daughter likes to use them to hold her records, just her vintage records. How fun is that? Yes, you do. Yep, there, yeah, there again, this one has those slats, so you need a little piece of cardboard so they don't fall through. Yes, I did not feel the need to sand that so it was more distressed. I like that crisp black on this piece. I just loved all the detailing about this piece. And this might just be what this piece is. It may just be a magazine rack or just pretty decor. I just absolutely love it. Yep, you could put some flowers in this one also, but I just, I love the, doing magazine racks. So hi, thank you so much for watching today's video. And what did you think? Do you have a magazine rack that you have tucked behind a chair, in a closet, up in the attic? And you think, oh yeah, I can do that with it. Make it a decor piece. Make it, just give it the center of attention that it deserves. Just because it's a brown 1960s, 1970s. And if that's your taste, that is wonderful. But like I said, I always find these in the thrift store. And I am very happy to give them new life and remake them. So I thank you again for watching today's video. And if you are part of my YouTube family, like always, thank you so much. It just warms our heart, your comments, your thumbs up. You just help YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they keep recommending us. And if you're visiting our channel for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button. And as always, along with that notification bell, so you know when we've uploaded a new video.